I have some interesting information to tell you, and I'm sure that you've heard lots of interesting information today. But what if humankind could compose and perform a complex quantum equation, much like a piece of music or an interactive artwork? What if we could control very complex information intuitively? Could this lead to an exponential rise in consciousness in a new age? What if scientists could work with complex information much in the same way that composers and artists compose a piece of artwork? Would this lead to a new understanding and a unity among artists, scientists, and engineers that will hearken to the days of da Vinci? There's a team of us researchers at the University of California, Santa Barbara. We're artists, scientists, and engineers. And we've found a way to work creatively together in consort, mapping very large scale, complex mathematical data sets in time and space. And in doing this, we found a method. That method is using the creative compositional process in order to compose your data. And in building this new computational framework, researchers can display their data visually, sonically, and interact with that data, whether they're a computer scientist building a system, a physicist working with an n-dimension equation, or an artist making a new form of art. And in order to do this research, I invented an instrument at the University of California, Santa Barbara, a very large instrument. It's called the Allosphere. It's a three-story metal sphere in an echo-free chamber. It's likened to the Enterprise holodeck. One can walk into their data, and they can compose and perform very complex data. I'm going to run a video for you and I'm going to actually show you uh, the instrument, and you're going to do a virtual fly-through into the instrument, and um, you're gonna see the research that we're doing. This instrument is in the California Nanosystems Institute. That means artists, scientists, and engineers are working together under the same roof. We actually built a building that will go from the polymer to the application. You're going onto the campus right now. Behind you, that's the California Nanosystems Institute. Ealing's Hall. I've got material scientists, physicists in that building, and we also have media artists. You're flying right now into the allosphere. It's a three-story metal sphere in an echo-free chamber. Think of the allosphere as a large, dynamically varying digital microscope connected to a supercomputer. You can have 20 to 30 researchers on the bridge, suspended in a metal ball, and doing scientific data discovery. Could you imagine if you had a team of researchers that actually could fly into an atom and watch and hear electrons spin? I think I need some sound. Uh, and you could fly into a lattice of atoms and do uh, sculpting of materials. Here uh, is my research team flying into my, the cortex of my colleague's brain. This is real functional MRI data. We're flying through it as though it's a world. We're in blood tissue, and we're mining blood density levels by using intelligent agents that are singing it back to us musically. Here we are, a little bit about who we are, as I said. Uh, we're artists, scientists, and engineers. I'm a composer, orchestrally trained, working with my visual artists. We map very complex and dimensional data with our scientists that are looking to discover new patterns in information. And with our engineers, we're making one of the biggest interactive supercomputers in the world. Ours is a new form of art, science, and intersection of this field to create new works. Now I'm going to fly you into five research projects. This, again, is Allobrain, the real cortex of my colleague's brain. He was going into fMRI machines and registering his blood density level every time he saw something he thought was beautiful. It's our attempt to quantify what part of the brain lights up uh, when you're seeing things that are aesthetically pleasing. We have 12 intelligent agents, these little computer programs, these triangles, the little rectangles, 
They're computer doctors. They're flying through the brain and they're reporting blood density levels to you sonically. Higher pitches means higher densities. The color of the agent is the region of the brain that it's exploring. So you can imagine what this would do for medical diagnostics. Uh, I can't uh, tell you what we believe it does for beautiful new art forms. Right now we're going to go off to the right of my colleague's brain and we're going to fly into another research project that is biogenerative algorithms to create artificial nature. This is a scientific and artistic research project. Uh, biogenerative algorithms allow us to understand self-assembly, self-organization, very important for my nanoscale researchers. For us, we're making new eco-worlds, new artificial worlds. Right now, you have these as little computer programs. The little single-cell bacteria are being eaten by the little butterfly creatures that are eating these nutrients. They're growing, procreating, and dying. All the communications that they're making deal with what, whether they're actually eating or whether they're growing or whether they're dying. Right now, we're going to go down to a lattice of atoms. This is a new materials compound. One white hydrogen atom bonding with four zinc atoms. This could become a new transparent material for solar cells, a clear liquid paint that you could spray on your windows and light up 100-story office buildings. My colleagues were able to get one white hydrogen atom to bond with four zinc atoms. We came up with a new technique of visualization for them called streamlines that allow them to see the electrostatic density charge in their lattice of atoms. We've been able to find the bonding nodes for them in this lattice of atoms that could speed up fabrication and really make this a very powerful material for transparent solar cells. We also think it makes a beautiful artwork. You're hearing the emission spectrums of these atoms. Oxygen, zinc, and hydrogen are singing to you. Now we're flying into one atom, the hydrogen atom. This is the time-dependent Schrodinger equation in 3D, showing you an electron in superposition split amongst three orbitals of the hydrogen atom. You're actually hearing the electron's harmonic oscillator as it goes through the path. The white bubbles are the Heisenberg principle of uncertainty. The white bubbles are the probability wave when we don't perturb the space. But you see we put little agents in there. We're surfing the probability wave to find the fields. And you're seeing all the possible places this electron could be at any given point as we go through this. Hear that pulsing? That means the electron has jumped into two orbitals that are so close they're emitting a photon. My scientists say they can hear the photon emission before they can see it. Now you understand the importance of multimodal representation of your data. We use all of our senses when we're in our analog labs. And what we're going to do now, as we, listen, I love this beautiful sound, but we're going to actually go even further down. We're going to go into one single electron spin. Real research from my colleagues in Spintronics, they're looking at decoherence in a single electron spin. We made a musical visual audio synthesizer out of their quantum dot, okay? You are seeing quantum information flow. You are hearing what happens when they tip the electron into the quantum state. I told them it was going to sound like a voice. It was going to sound like a time-bearing filter. Listen to this. It sounds a little bit like a didgeridoo. They were all very uh, amazed and amused and uh, really wondered what it meant and how an artist could know their data better than they know their data. So these brief research examples will show you the kind of work that we're doing together at the University of California, Santa Barbara. We really and truly believe that we will only break this quantum thing together. Artists think in a completely different way than my scientist colleagues do. And our engineers think differently as well. But remember one thing, we have come to the conclusion. We are all artists, we are all scientists, and we are all engineers. We all create, we all analyze, and we all design. Thank you very much.